Well, a pleasant good morning, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of the PR Man and the Coach Talking Ball and the Ball for the Podcast, presented by Sports Kita. I'm your host, Reggie Roberts, and I'm joined by my, my NFL analyst, Mike Smith, uh, winning his coach at Falcons. Good morning, Coach. How are we doing, man? I'm great, Reggie. I hope you are. It's safe. It's prep week. They're, hey, real practice. They're on the site. They're in they're in Scottsdale, Phoenix, wherever they are, getting ready to go. Glendale, they're, they're, you know, they, they, the both teams showed up uh, on Sunday and they had the had the big extravaganza thing last night. I watched a little bit of it. Uh, I tell you what, now everybody everybody seems like they're having a good time. They did something for the first time last night where they had both teams sort of interacting and talking and being interviewed by all the different network partners that joined together and doing the interviews. You know, it was it looked like it was very very relaxed. Everybody seemed to be in a really good mood and. Um, you know, uh, I tell you what, I'm looking for. I'm looking for a great. I hadn't figured out who I'm, who I'm to. I'm re- rooting for yet. I still hadn't figured out who I'm cheering for. Well, I've, I've, I've got my favorite. I can tell you that. And love. We'll, we'll divulge it we'll, later. We'll get, we'll, we'll get to that. But hey, Reg, before we get going, I got to go off script a little bit, and I got to get your opinion of the Pro Bowl. Uh, you know, I'm, I think it, this is just my, this is just my opinion. You know, for a guy who used to work the Pro Bowl, what you know, I, I I wasn't impressed with it. I thought it I thought it reeked of uh, you know little kids, and you know I didn't I didn't like it at all. I didn't like the format, and I especially didn't like the format where one of the players I forget who the guy was who dislocated his toe. That's never good when a star player who 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 is team who whose team is counting on him is going to miss a, a great portion of the offseason because he's got a dislocated bone in his, in his foot. That's not good. Yeah, you know, when they were playing true tag football and when the old Pro Bowl the last 10 years, and even though they were wearing equipment, nobody's tackling anybody. I don't know that I can't recall of anybody getting hurt. But, uh, you know, I think it's got, you know, it's got a chance, especially with the NFL uh, promoting flag football, especially with the women. And, you know, I think that part of it would is it was kind of cool. But I agree with you. I don't think it's they're going to have to make some changes. They'll try to figure out some ways to make it a little bit better. But, you know, it did kind of promote flag football. And for young kids and for girls, you know, I think that's something that the NFL, uh, you know, is, is trying to promote. But just watching, you know, the top guys not playing real football, it, it was it was kind of tough. It was. It, it, it really was. I mean, I, you know, I... I didn't like it, um, you know. I, 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 to, now that you mention it, the, the game, with the, you know, the, the players seem to enjoy the game. The, the actual, and I, and I agree with the whole pro, the uh, the, the uh, tag, the uh, uh, flag football piece because I think that's important. But I, I, it, it didn't feel, you know, it just didn't feel like it didn't feel like um, football. I, I, I think a little bit more of the skills challenge, maybe the skills challenge. I think people are, you know, appreciate the athleticism that, that the NFL players have. Um, I think they could, they could, they need to go back and, and maybe you know one of the ways to do it is, is impanel former players and current players and put and put something together. I mean, I think when you get people in a room and give them a buy-in and ask their ask what their opinion is, you get a you get a better get a, you might get a better product. But I, overall, the whole thing, I wasn't really impressed with that. Yeah, it it looked like some guys uh, instead of getting Gatorade, we're probably getting cold beers. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I know that wasn't happening, but I mean, you can just, you know, you envision a bunch of guys throwing, you know, throwing the ball in the park a little bit, you yeah. know, and now the skill set was, was out of this world. Don't get me wrong, watching, you know, watching the skill set, but it was like, you know, it was like going to a park uh, yeah. early fall, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and watch, hey, and watching four or five guys throw, throwing the ball around, but, yeah. uh, you know, we got to take a good, you know, we got to take a good look at it, and they're trying to figure it out. Uh, yeah, we, you know, I'm, you know, just watching last night, there were, you know, there's, this game's got a bunch of, I don't remember, you know, this might be the first Super Bowl in a long time that's got as many fantastic storylines that this one has, you know, with, you know, Andy Reid, who spent 14 seasons in Philadelphia, took him to five straight NFC Championship games, you know, went to the Super Bowl and didn't win it, but went to one. And now he's now he's going against his old team, uh, where he's going to five straight AFC Championship games with his new team, the Chiefs. And then the one little note I picked up yesterday, I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you up and talk to you a little bit about this. 
you know, I, I didn't realize that, that Sirianni was on that. Sirianni was part of the chief staff when Andy got there in 2013 when he replaced Romeo Cornell. He's, we, he started there in 2009 as a, as a qu offensive quality control coach, worked his way up to wide receivers coach, and was let go when Andy got there in 2013. Andy Reid had David Culley as his wide receivers coach, and 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 he let uh, he he let Sirianni go. And Sirianni kind of talked in depth about it yesterday about you know he's got a little bit of you know he didn't and he understands it. He appreciates appreciates the way Andy handled it. He talked to him all and stuff. But you know, tell me how that tell me how that how, how that. I mean, I'm sure. You've dealt with that, had to, you know, let guys go. And I mean, how do you think, how do you think Coach Suriyan is feeling this week, knowing that he's going, I mean, he's probably got a little, extra, it's going to be a little extra if he wins. Well, I'm sure you, nobody likes to get let go. Nobody likes to get fired, but it's a given in the NFL. Yeah. And when there's a change at the head coach position, there's going to be a lot of changes below uh, in, the, in the coaching staff. So it, he should have expected it. I'm sure he did, but yeah. You don't like to be let go. Nobody likes yeah. to, li likes for that to happen. Yeah. And I think it is going to be some, a little bit of a motive, motivation, especially that he brought it up. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, uh, it's, it, he's, I was so, I was so shocked to see that. I mean, he brought it up, and it was, it, it was a huge story, but a huge story down the, the opening night of the Super Bowl. Yeah, and and really, it's it's happens. It's it happens all the time in the NFL. It's not like a one off and. Because it's there at the Super Bowl, it's probably got more traction than uh, than it really needs to, to be. That's just part of this business. And as you know, guys change jobs, and they're still you know they're still changing jobs right now. As we you know are four days away from the from the Super Bowl, there's still two head coaching jobs open. I think seven or eight offensive coordinator jobs, and it's been the latest uh, in my recollection where they haven't filled the jobs. Maybe they're taking a little bit more time and being a little bit, uh, what I would say, in depth in terms of looking at all the candidates. We talked about the 53 candidates earlier. And, uh, you know, I, th I guess this goes along with it. It's it's not going to be filled. You know, the, the merry-go-round of coaches is not going to be filled before the Super Bowl this year. It's going to probably linger on maybe to, uh, for four or five days afterwards. And a lot of assistant coaches aren't going to know where their seed is on the merry-go-round until a couple weeks after the Super Bowl. I can't remember, Mike, ever in, 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 a, in the – I can't remember ever that all the jobs weren't filled before the Super Bowl was played. I just can't remember a year when that's happened. I mean, this is unprecedented. And, we and you know, you knew it was happening when – you know, last week or yeah, last week we talked about it. We were talking about you know the 53 openings, and, but I, I figured I figured that you know the Indianapolis job was was going to be close, and I figured Arizona, but they're not done. I mean, they're, they're still they're still bringing guys in for second interviews. They are, Reg, and and, and like I said, they they may be taking a completely different strategy, and maybe it's from the, from the league office to say, hey, we'd like for you to be uh, very very in depth in regards to who you know who you're going to hire and uh and maybe it's maybe it's not maybe the owners have decided man hey we've had too many one and dones and twos and outs as far as head coaches are concerned that hey it's costing me some money i need to you know i need to make sure that i'm gonna hire me a guy that i want to be around for three or four years and give yeah. him a chance right. well speaking of speaking of doing it right i mean the technical you know, whiff that were over two with you know with Coach Cullors as we just mentioned, and, and Lovey Smith who both just got one year. You know, they hired D'Amico Ryan's who who we are we both agreed is going to be you know was a, was a very successful defensive coordinator in San Francisco. He got a six year contract, which I think is what you're going to need to get that group turned around. What do you think? What's your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's a good choice. Uh, D'Amico Ryan's was a was a really good player uh, in the league. And he's done a fantastic job as defensive coordinator. That San Francisco 49ers defense all year long. I think they maybe had a couple of games where they uh, weren't up to snuff, but they, you know, they played as good as any defense in the in the league. And it was, I'm glad to see he's got history with the uh, with the Texans because he played there. And it's great to see he's going to have a six year contract. And let's hey, let's hope that it's not like the last two coaches that the Houston Texans have hired, and that he gets an opportunity to at least get half of it, which would be three years. 
Yeah, um, that, nothing that, would surprise me that you know that organization they need a change, right. um, and they're going with the you know a young defensive coach that's uh, you know played or played in the league. He understands the league, and uh, he's also done a great job as a coach in a very short time. Yeah. Coach, stand with the whole San Francisco, uh, and just just watch me. This sort of involves some news that took place this week, and, and could set up something that. I think it happened. I just wanted to get your take on. You know, we had a little news while you were while you're out on the on the left coast, and that you know Tom Brady retired. I think nobody was really shocked to see that Tom Brady retired. And as soon as it happened, especially the day after, my phone was ringing about other things. And you know, all of my friends and all of my sports writer friends and broadcast friends were saying they don't they don't think it's real. You know, he sounded. <laughs> real. They do. They, 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 they don't. They don't think it's real. And, I, and I'm going to them, but just give me a second. They're all saying, oh, you know, he's blah, 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 you know, you did it. And then it, then the phone sort of rang a little bit more when he came out yesterday when he said, well, I'm not going to start my gig at Fox until 2024. Hello? Hello? 2024, <laughs> I'm not going to start my gig at Fox. My $375 million a year 10-year contract deal till 2024, which leads, which leads to this question. Okay, so it comes out the day after the championship games that, that Brock Purdy, had, the, had a torn all the collateral ligament, which is a six month fix. Okay, so the Niners are saying all the right things. You know, we got, we're gonna we're gonna let Jim, we're gonna let uh, Trey Lance and Brock Purdy once he gets healthy. We'll probably draft another guy or pick up somebody to have three quarterbacks. But you know, I don't believe any of it. I don't believe any of it. I believe uh, Tom Brady when he says that he's done. I mean, Gronk, Gronk <laughs> and, and then and then mysteriously Gronk comes out and says, you know what? I think I'm gonna play next year too. If Tom, if Ty goes, if Tommy asks me to play, I'm gonna play with him too. So, you know, it's all kind of, you know, the puzzles are all kind of, you know, mysteriously coming together. You know, I grew up in San Mateo, 40 miles down the road. Niners are his boyhood, boyhood team. He's now, he's now out of football. He's just gonna, and then he just, then he says yesterday, you know what, Fox, I'm gonna wait till 2024. Man, and you, hey, you're making this call early. Hey. Hey, you know, you're trying. You're connecting. You're connecting some dots there, Reg. I'm just head ball coach. I'm just putting it out there because because yeah. I just I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it when he when he when he said it. Uh, even if he's on the beach, he's kind of tearing up. I didn't believe it when he said it. And then with all the other stuff with the with the, with the injury and and then the and then the podcast yesterday, it just it just it just didn't sound good. It just it it, it just it's like you think where people aren't paying attention. I mean, you know, we pay attention to this league. We pay attention to it year out and it's just i don't know i just you know i, well, I think need to get somebody to check out his body language and an expert to see if the it, what it what they're saying there but i would you know i know that he's changed his mind once before and maybe he would change yes. his mind again reg but uh i believe you can't hey you can't just say you're you're gonna you're done and then keep coming back i know that's that's not the case but I don't understand why he wants, maybe he wants some time just to decompress. It's been a long, wonderful career for Tom Brady. I'm taking the other side of it. Maybe he just wants to decompress. That's why he said, hey, the Fox money's going to be there. It's not like I, I it's not like I'm going to have an issue missing a paycheck. Right. You know, he can't, right. and he can't, can't, he can't apply for unemployment, I believe. <laughs> Wanted to. <laughs> no, I, but, well, I would think, you know, even even with the divorce, you know, I would think that, you know, he he can, he, you know, he can limp along for a year. But he didn't really have to play. I mean, he can limp along with all the money he's made. I mean, he played 23 seasons, crying out loud. So, he, I mean, he, oh gosh, no, he, he's, you know, and he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And yeah, he'll probably be not not probably. I'm confident that he will be a very good analyst when he gets in the booth but it sounds like he wants to take some time to yeah. decompress it's been a long long career for tom brady and it yeah. not only wears on the body but it wears on the mind i can assure you that last point no way he goes out with, with goes out playing the way he played in tampa bay you I mean guys who are that good don't want to go out on that note i mean i i, I don't believe it I, that that's my last point that's my last point. okay well I, I think he's probably done. I'm just taking the other side of it. I just think he's, you know, he's he's done all he can do. There's nothing else for left for him to do as an NFL quarterback. 
and yeah. he probably wants to he probably wants to practice a little bit before he goes into the booth and that's probably what he's going to do he's going to take some time off and he's going to learn how to be the best analyst that he can possibly be calling games for fox that's Not just a bad we're, we're hey we're completely on opposite ends we'll see who's right we are we are because because i thought you you... Want, hey you want to double up on that bet no i do not no okay all right <laughs> no. okay no, no, I don't want to do. You're on with the PR man, the coach talking ball in the ball across the pocket, presented by Sports Kita. You know, um, when you when you look at the week, Mike, there's a, there's a lot of you know, there's a re- lot of storylines, but obviously they all come back to you know the, the position there, the, the most important position in football, which is the quarterbacks. And when you look at the numbers of both of these quarterbacks, I mean, both of those guys had amazing years, but they did it very, very differently. You know, you know, um, you know, start with Patrick Mahomes. Both of them, you know, they, they were both Texas guys. You know, tech, um, um, Mahomes threw for you know 5,200 yards. He threw 41 touchdown passes, had 105 plus QB rating. And then you know, you know, Jalen, you know, really, really good passer, really good, really good pocket passer. You know, but he he can he can beat you both ways. He can beat you with his legs. He had 99 design runs this season, including the playoffs, and scored an NFL record 15 touchdowns, which is the record. I mean, you know. Talk to me a little bit about the styles of each guy, Mike. What you like, what you don't like, and, and maybe who has the advantage with each with the quarterbacks. Well, this is a discussion that's been been going on all last week, and it's going to continue. Uh, both of them are probably the top two finalists for the MVP of the right. league. There's right. No, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, there, there are some a lot of similarities. They're both very athletic. They. They can run. They can run and throw the football very effectively. I think in the Kansas City setup, they are more uh, off-script runs for Mahomes, right. Right. and he, you know he he creates. Where on the other side, with the Eagles, <clears throat> Jalen Hurst, he is an integral part of the running game with the you know with the option to you know to run it or throw it, and. Uh, that's something that you know. That's something that that has been very prevalent in college football, and has become more prevalent in the in the NFL. And Hurts has had a great year. If he doesn't miss a couple games with a shoulder injury on his left, you know, on his left uh, left side, he probably wins the M- MVP. But you know, Mahomes, uh, you know, he, you know, he's he's different that he can really create and they give him that freedom. Uh, and it's really transfers down from what Andy Reid does. I mean, the things that Andy does, putting together a game plan and how they always come up with, you know, two or three things that are off the wall. Yeah. Uh, and and they'll, they'll show up and, you know, he lets them go off script. Right. And he's very, very good at that. You know, and Kelsey is as well. Is, you know, to me, which is his security blanket, is is Kelsey, and uh, they're they're alike in a lot of ways. But I think the systems that they're playing in in the NFL right now are really different, even though they look very similar. Well, you know, it, it, it's interesting. You know, I, it, you like, you know, you, you like what I, I love what Kansas City does on offense, I mean, and I really do think, you know, now that it, that that Mahomes has had, he's going to have two weeks to sort of get that ankle. You know, get that ankle as healthy as he could possibly get. I mean, obviously, he'll be more healthy for the Super Bowl than he was for the AFC Championship game because of, because of the two week, two week gap. But it was interesting last week they were talking about yesterday. They were talking about you know the game plans put in, all that work they did. It they put the whole thing. It's all they got. It all got put in last week. And so the enemy, Eric Bieniemy, the Chiefs offensive coordinator, was saying, you know, we're just going to fine tune and polish. And I and I want to ask you this because you've been on a team that's gone to the Super Bowl when you were you were an assistant in in Baltimore. You know, I, I, I thought the Eagles said some, a lot of interesting things, and I thought Kansas City said some interesting things. They said, the one thing we want our guys to do is to make sure everything you do is similar to what you do at home. In other words, the Chief had a whole crew of people come out to the hotel a little bit early, their hotel where they're staying at, and designed all the meeting rooms to look just like the meeting rooms look in Kansas City, which I thought was brilliant. I thought that was really smart. Um, Fletcher Cox from the Eagles was talking about you know, he got up and talked to the team and said, everything you do 
during game week in Philadelphia, do it in Arizona. So if on Tuesday you eat a peanut butter sandwich and an apple and watch film, you do that on Tuesday here. I mean, how how much of routine, standing routine is important for this game, Coach? Well, it's very important that you that they have as much routine as they can. And it's very difficult outside the meeting rooms to make it be like it is in right. Philly and Kansas City as you go through your preparation. But you do have that safe haven, and that safe haven is always in the meeting room and on the practice field. You right. know, the field that they're going to be practicing on, guess what? It's going to be 100 yards right. long and 53 and a third yards wide. Right. And I thought it was brilliant, just like you said, what Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs have done have tried to make the meeting rooms look and feel like the meeting rooms that they've used all year long. Right. Uh, and you try to do it, but it's it's impossible. As you've been to many Super Bowls, it is crazy, and you cannot keep the players from not realizing what's going on right. there in Glendale, Arizona, this week. Right. You, you just you just can't. So I think you've got to try to keep it as close as you can, and you want most of your game planning to be done last week. This right. week it's this week it's tune up. It's just get those guys to the starting line as yeah. healthy as they possibly can be, yeah. and 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 they're they're going to be fresh. They should be fresh if they you know if they take care of their take care of their bodies uh, this week, which I know they will. And you know the the uh, Chiefs have a little bit more injury issues going on than the Eagles. That's going to be a big you know that's going to be a, a big factor in the game as well. And I'm sure we'll talk about that. Um, as we lead up to the, you know, to the big game on on Sunday, you know, I, I think I think the other thing that, that I think is a, is a, is, a, is, is going to be a really big point in the game is Philadelphia's defense. I mean, we, we you and I are, you are sort of you know you and I are both we talk about defense and you know I, I love defensive guys. I love guys that, how they play the toughness they have and the fact the Eagles have had you know they had seventy sacks during the regular season. They had all four other guys who, who, who their four starters. You know, Hassan Riddick had had 16. Everybody else had 11, um, and you know they've gotten eight during the during the during the postseason. Um, and then I, I think the other thing will be critical: the, the matchup. They were talking about. I saw something yesterday that Hassan Riddick finished second in the NFL with 16 sacks, taking the game to love three. You got three and a half during two playoff games. He's going up against right tackle Andrew Wiley for the uh, for the Chiefs, who's allowed nine sacks this season. So he's considered sort of the weak link in uh, in Kansas City's offensive line. That's a big matchup. That's a huge matchup for for, 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 for for the Chiefs this week. Well, Andy Reid and the offensive staff, they're going to give some help. To, <laughs> they're going to help him out. Like they're going yeah. to help, help him out. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you, you're going to have to. You're going to either you know, have a tight end overhang, tight end in that position, or back, or they're going to slide the front that way. There's so many ways that, uh, you know, that they can try to stop one. But the thing that I think that's – so impressive about the Eagles in their in their off defensive line is they don't do it with the four man rush. They're not That's a team it. that has to go blitz. They don't go blitz crazy, no. and, the, and they can put the ball uh, or, or they can get the ball out of the quarterback's hand quickly because they're going to be putting pressure on them with four guys. They don't have to play cover zero. They don't have to put a five man rush to add an extra guy. They do not need to blitz. And I think that's the thing that is important. And you know, we can break it, you know, we can break this down, but I think at the core, the difference between these two teams is that the Eagles are better on the defensive line and they're better on the offensive line. They are going to win the game in the trenches. If, and that's what I believe is going to happen. Right. right. They're, they're the better team in the trenches when you compare defensive lines to defensive line, offensive line to offensive line. As you know, the, the Chiefs, they've done a nice job on their defensive line, but they've really got two guys. They've got Chris Jones. Right. He's, you know, he's a stud. There's no doubt about it, but that's only one. They've got right. four or five that can rush the passer on the other side. Frank right. Clark starting to play. They thought he was going to be a really good player and he started to play well in the, in the playoffs. So they've got two, but really the Chiefs, their percent, their blitz percentage with Steve Pat Spagnola, it's a lot higher. Yeah. It's a lot higher than than the Eagles, and that's what I think. 
this, you know, everybody likes the glit, glitter and all that with the quarterbacks. Talk about two great quarterbacks, the MVPs. Talk about the star wide receivers. But the game has always been won and lost in the trenches. Correct. And I believe that the Eagles have better offensive and defensive lines than the Chiefs. And I think I, that's going to be the big difference in the game. I think you're spot on with that because I think the statistics, when you look at it, bears, bears it out. You know, Jason Kelsey, you know, six-time Pro Bowler. You know, he's he's a quarterback for that for that for that offensive line. Um, you know, Lane Johnson, who's I mean, oh my gosh, he's playing right tackle. I mean, he's he's playing with the, with a, a, a doctor tear all season. I saw something the other day. He hadn't allowed a, a sack in over a thousand snaps. That's unheard That's 30 of. Thirty games. Unheard of. It's unheard yeah. of. That's unheard of. Yeah. You got you got a growing every time you walk. That thing hurts. Yeah. You know, and he's and he's trying. It's a, you know, it's amazing. And uh, you know, they got Landon Dickerson, and then they've got the you know Jordan I, Mayatala and Samulo. Both you know, both those guys are really good players as well. They're strong all the way across. That, and hey, I'm not dishing the the Kansas City Chiefs offensive line. They they've got some really good guys, but they do have a weak link there at the right tackle. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he, he's going to struggle. Yeah, I, I saw that he, don't you, you know, about about Lane, and I'm thinking, are you serious? Yeah. A thousand yeah. snaps? Yeah, and and what did Andrew Wiley? You mentioned it earlier. The right tackle. How many is he nine. giving up this year? Nine. Yeah, nine, nine. That, yeah, that's one, one. You know, one every two games yeah. for the season. Yeah. But let me tell you, they're going to be coming after yeah. him, and I think that you're going to see the Chiefs are going to make sure they do everything they can to to help. Yeah. You'll see it by formation. Yeah. You'll see the chips and things like that. It's going to be a great <laughs> game. The two best teams in the National Football League are playing for the world championship. Right. And that doesn't always happen. And if you you know if you put the stats up, Reg, they're almost identical. They really are. They really are. They really are. And Each team scored 546 points. You know, they're, they're they're both 16 and three. I mean, I did that I did that yesterday. Just sort of looking at I mean they, they really are. I mean you've got you've got the you've got the 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 Chiefs number one NFL pass offense at 280 yards per game going against the Eagles number one pass defense which is really giving up 180 yards a game that's incredible yeah yeah it's you know it's strength against strength and those are all pretty you know those are all pretty stats and all that kind of stuff but I'm going to go back to what I said earlier it's gonna get one in the trenches and that's what's good that's what's going to happen and everybody's going to talk about the, you know, the quarterback play and the wide receiver play and the running back play, all of those things. Those are hey, that's what's going to happen. But we need we need to tap tap our tap, tip our hat to the guys that play down in the trenches in the dirt and ball. I mean, and are are you know the get in those physical battles, and that's what it's going to be. It's yeah. going to be a war in those trenches, and I hope that the the the, the people that are producing this uh, Super Bowl will let us see those battles. We're going to be able to see, you know, what Mahomes can, you know, what Mahomes can do and what Hurts can do. But let's see what those guys are doing because that's where it's going to be won. Mike, you you you, you coach defense in this league for a, a long time. If you were putting together a game plan, let's say you were putting a game plan for for Jalen Hurts, what would you would you spy? Would you fix it up what, what would you, you know they were talking about the other day about the spy seems to work and but that sort of limits you and put and, and, and makes you susceptible to the pass because you're playing with one less defender give me your take on how how would you how you do that well i think that you're going to have to mix it up that's the thing that i think both defensive coordinators are going to have have to do and when you're trying to defend uh, jalen hirsch you've got to make sure that you're prepared for, for you know for the replays because he may give it, he may pull it and run. And he is a darn good runner. And he's not you no know, yeah. he's not creating. These are plays that are designed based on what the defense presents. So you're gonna have you're right. gonna have to change it up. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you see first run the ball a little bit more in this game. They're gonna make sure 
that Steve Spagnola and the Chiefs have got a solid plan to stop the quarterback run. And that's right. the big difference when you start talking about the replay is you've got to account when you play the Hurts in the Philadelphia Eagles, you've got to account for the quarterback. And you don't necessarily do that most of the time in the NFL. Now, Patrick Mahomes right. can, can run those plays and they run them occasionally, but most of his right. success has been when they get off script and he's able, you know, he's able to buy time and do things, flip it underhand, flip it over the back of his head, the things that he, you know, that we all get amazed watching him play play football. When you're watching Jalen Hurts, you're watching it by scheme, what they're trying to do. Um, coach, yesterday there was a there was another uh, coach that was introduced to his new team. Sean Payton was introduced as a new head coach for the Denver Broncos. Um, and it was it was it was very good, you know, typical Sean. Sean's very smart, you know, one of the top offensive minds in football, very well spoken. And then he's talking, he's talking, and then you know something that's just sort of, you know, I, when I when I see coach just talk, obviously I immediately think of you. You know, somebody asked him in the scrum after the press conference, they asked him, say, well, you know, um, you know, Russell Wilson's quarterbacks coaches, you know, he had a series of coaches here who worked with him uh, in the building last year. So it was his quarterbacks coach and his his stretch coach and his his mental coach. They're all in the building. He's he says, I'm sure. Are you gonna let that? Are you gonna let that happen? Well, you know, now that you're the head coach. And Sean had this look on his face, like, like, like the guy was from Mars. He goes, <laughs> he, uh, yeah. he, I, mean, he, I don't know. If he, did you see? Did you see it? Did you no, see it? No, but I, hey, Reg, I can just imagine. He probably said something like this. I'm just paraphrasing it. Um, no, I mean, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> he, he, it, was, it was so funny. I'm, I'll get the clip and send it to you. He was, he, the, he, he's, he's, he's facing the scrum and. And the guy, the guy who asked the question, asked him, he was on his right. So Sean turned to his right and he's looking, and he says, uh, "You know, I'm. Uh, I haven't heard that. No, he says, no, we won't, that won't. We won't be doing that. We won't. <laughs> he just said we won't be doing. It. And so there's been a whole lot of Twitter, Twitter comments, Instagram stuff about how, you know, well, you know, maybe he should have talked to Russell. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, talk to Russell. Why does he got to talk to? He's the head coach. Okay, he's the head coach. He sets the tone. He sets the. He, He's the one who changes the culture. I mean, you know, if, if you if, if Russell had that going on last week, last year, no wonder they weren't successful. You, we can't have guys having their own guys in there with, with we trying to get ready for games. That, that ain't going to work. Yeah, I, you know, I, I believe in some sports like golf and tennis, you can have individual, individ, it's an individual sport. You can have individual coaches. And I, I've heard of that happening in college golf where the, the golf coach lets them go to their swimming coach or their or their mental coach or their putting coach but not in it not in a team in a team setting you can't do that or you'll have 53 guys having their own coach exactly i mean you build you, know, you build a really really good step part of your job when you when you get the job when you're when you're talking when you're presenting yourself to the ownership group they're asking you hey coach smith Who's going to be your offensive coordinator? Hey, Coach Smith, who's going to be your special teams coordinator? Who's going to be your offensive, who's going to be your quarterback? Coach? That's part of getting the gig. You got to have a staff. That's part of it. Correct. And that's part of it. And I'm sure, you know, Coach Payton's got it. You got to listen. He went through it until he got the job. So he obviously was convincing enough to tell him that he, he'll be able to get really good coaches to, to come to Denver to, to coach that team. But, but when I heard that, I mean, they were like, well, why didn't he talk to Russell? Why does he have to talk to Russell? For what? Yeah, I think, uh, and and that might be some mis mis uh, con misinformation. I, who knows yeah. what what actually happens? But I did hear that he had an office in the you know in the building, which is a little a little odd and a little strange. Uh, I don't think that's ever happened. Uh, and there's been a lot of great players that have have played a long time uh, in the National Football League. That I don't know that. I've never heard of one having an office, their own private office, in in the building. So uh, it, it, yeah. it really surprised me that that was that that was going on yeah. in uh, Denver last year. But I can assure you one damn thing: it ain't happening next season. It's not happening in the off season. Sean's going to put together a great staff. He knows he knows a lot of people. He can evaluate talent. 
not only talented football players, but he can evaluate talented coaches. And I'm sure he'll do a, a, a deep dive into a lot of different people. And he'll yeah. take his time in putting his staff together. And he'll put together a top-notch staff that some will have connections with them, some won't. And that's the way that, that you put your staff together. I don't think you can go one way or the other. You can't go with all guys that you know. You can't go with all guys that you don't know. And I think it's a you know it's a fine line when you put together a coaching staff. And it's probably more important. There's more unsuccessful staffs than there are unsuccessful teams. I believe that, Reg. Yeah, and that's right. the most important thing as a head coach is that you've got to put together a staff in the vision that you have and you can't let outside forces be a part of that you've got you can't let the players be a part of it you can't let anybody be a part of it you've got to take in the information and try to put together the best group of men that you possibly can and you know there are some constraints because of contractual things there in the national football league you just can't go you know oh this guy i want to go work with sean i can go work not not so fast if you're under contract with another team right mike let me ask you this i mean you know you i used to see you at the combine and you know we'd be at super bowl and stuff and a lot of people want to talk to you people you know hey hey i need five minutes with mike and I, you know so let me ask you this when, when you're putting together your staff and you you've got an idea of guys you work with guys that, that, that are who, who have really good reputations in the building people that you rely on people that you glean information from how much how much do you especially if you weren't really sure of it guy so let's say the guy you wanted wasn't available and then you call somebody in the league or in, a, in the division or someone that you knew that you trusted that you worked with and he says hey mike this guy is applying for your quarterback's coach job or running back's job he's really good how much of that did you did you did you lean on that did you sort of just kind of evaluate the two guys and, and, and just what was your process how did you go about that you well i think say? everybody Everybody has a different process, Reg, and a lot of time it's based on familiarity for a lot of coaches. And I'll tell you this story. Of the three original coordinators that I hired, I only worked with one of them. Two of the guys I had never worked with. And and uh, that's probably not the norm in, in the NFL. I had never worked with uh, Mike Malark. I never worked with with Keith Armstrong, but I admired their work. I've right. worked against, I've got, I've worked against them. Yeah. And I had an opportunity to, to put them on my list because they were available. Right. And actually, I think both Mike and Keith, believe it or not, were coaching on that one in 15. They were. they were. Staff, they were. If I'm not mistaken, I, both of them. They both were. Yeah, they, they were, and I'm sure people looked at it going, oh, my God, what is he doing? But I knew what kind of coaches those guys were from going against them. And sometimes it's better to make a decision from afar than it is from from inside. And you try, you know, you're going to get all kinds of calls, thousands and thousands of calls and emails and recommendations. And that's probably one of the most difficult things for a head coach is putting a, a staff together because right. – of all the constraints contractually. And then the other pieces that are part of the puzzle is you're gonna get so many different people that you've worked with to say, hey, here's the guy you need to hire, Smitty. Here's what you need, you know, here's what you need to do. And you've yeah. got to basically put yourself in a little bit of a bubble and go through the process and know what you want your staff to look like. You can't have all type A people on your coaching staff. No. That ain't, that's not gonna work. You've got to, you know, you've got to be able to find and mix and match and get people that are going to be able to work together and understand what their role is on the coaching staff. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I'm just, I'm just wondering how you went about it because I tell you what, we had some really good coaches. Keith, Keith Armstrong still special. He's still coaching. He's, he's, he's been at it for a long time and, and done it at a very high level. Yes, he has one of the top special teams coaches in in the league. Yeah. And, you know, Mike Malarkey was was fantastic in terms right. of putting together a, 
game plan. And then the other thing that you want to do, Reg, is you want to make sure that you have a succession plan in place. Right. I knew I, I knew Mike Malarkey wasn't going to be with us for a long time if we were successful, and it came to right. fruition. After three years, I think it was three three years or four years, he was the head hired as the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So you got to have a succession plan, and sometimes a succession plan isn't in the building; it may be somewhere else. Yeah. And those yeah. are the things that you have to. You know, when you're a head coach in the National Football League, you've got to scout not only the players, but you've got to scout the coaches, right? All you know, and watch what they do and what the trends are because. It is a fast-changing league. From three years ago to now, the game looks completely different. Yeah. There's some tenants that stay, but there's a whole bunch of things that go different. And you know, just shine out for one year. There's going to be some things that are that are are different now. And he's you know he's going to have some small adjustments that he's going to have to go through. Yeah, yeah. But we, one thing we do know: Russell Wilson's quarterbacks coach won't be at the building. But we do know that. He made that perfectly clear. Uh, abundantly clear yesterday. Yes, hey, coach. yesterday. Yeah. Well, hey, let's get let's get back to talk about this. You know, we talked about the offensive and defensive lines. Uh, you know, there's there's some other stories I'm sure that we need to be talking about. And I think one of them is probably the, the biggest one for the Kansas City Chiefs is is what wide receivers are gonna be healthy. What do you think? Well, you know, the, you know, the one thing that I'm concerned about is, and I haven't, I haven't seen the injury report. You know, I saw where Hardman's out for the year with the, with a pelvis injury. Uh, I haven't, I haven't seen. You know, they don't have to put out an injury report until tomorrow. I think tomorrow's the first one. And I haven't, I haven't seen who, who's going to play with you. I said I haven't seen that yet. Have you, are you, you got any information? Because I, I haven't seen that information yet. Yeah, I believe Andy is. Andy has come out and said he believes Smith Schuster and Kadarius Tony should be ready to go. Yeah, and it would be a, it would be a big surprise if if they're not. And the same thing to switch on the other side of the ball with cornerback uh, Lejarius Sneed. He's out of concu concussion protocol now, so he, he's on pace to to be back. The other guy uh, the thing that I think we've got to look at is is. Yeah. The, the, and, I, and he's from LSU, and I know you're got to be excited about this one. I activated my four yesterday. What? What? T t t tell me his name. What's his name? Clyde Hilaire. Whatever. I can't think. I never can think Clyde of Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Clyde Edwards Hilaire. They, they activated my boy yesterday. They did. He's, he's a good. He's a good player. I mean, you know, a really he, good player, and he opens up another dynamic because he's a great option out of the backfield. He yeah. really is. He can catch. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, but I do think that it's not as bad as everybody's thinking. They had to make a move and get and put Hardman on uh, IR, so he's not active to play. But if Smith Smith Schuster and and Kadarius Tony, if they're ready to go, they're going to be full speed. But the big guy that I still think is going to be the difference maker for the Kansas City Chiefs is that tight end whose brother plays on the other team. He's the real, you know, he, he's the real deal. He really is. Well, that was the last thing I wanted to talk about, you know, in that, you know, the, the person who's got, you know, you know, you know, Jason Kelsey, who's obviously top center, one of the top six-time Pro Bowl holder for the for the Beagles. You know, he's he's been on the they were on the news yesterday. But the get but the person that's gotten the most ink this week is the mom. I mean, the mom supposed is gonna be <laughs> the, the mom has been everywhere. Good morning, yeah. man. And what and what what was that jersey she was wearing? She got, she's got, she's got two or three of them. She's got one that's got, it's got, it's got a, a Chiefs Kelsey and a, a Eagles Kelsey on the back. This has got okay. it reversed. She's got one that's got, has got the, 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 the J Kelsey on the Eagles on the front, and the other one, the, the, the Patrick Kelsey, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the tight end on the back. I mean, so it's, okay, I couldn't figure that one out. She's everywhere. Just she's been. She, she was on. She's on the Today Show. She's on Good Morning America. She's on the she, Michael Urban interviewed her last night. She came. Michael Irvin was interviewing both the Kelsey brothers on the NFL's, you know, opening night, opening night for Super Bowl Fifty Seven, and all of a sudden the mom, like, like, like she's Bruce Springsteen, she comes out of the floor, got two packets of cookies, got <laughs> gave one to, <laughs> gave one to Travis, gave one to Jason, and he's talking to her. It's it's a really neat story. And, and think of this, Mike. What are the odds of one mom producing two Pro Bowl 
I mean, high level ball players who are playing on the set, who are playing on opposite sides, of going against each other. I mean, what are the odds of that? Well, it's never happened before, so it's, it's <laughs> big odds, no, da- no yeah. doubt. And uh, she's you know, got to yeah. be awful proud of of her two sons because they both have had wonderful careers. Wonderful. They really- careers. And <laughs> she's going to be happy and sad no matter what happens yeah. on on Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, they, they were talking about it, and, and they were, she talked about what they were like growing up. She said they were, you know, they were both very competitive. They played basketball, soccer, hockey. Uh, so they were like, doing a lot of fights, and, and you know, but everybody who everybody who knows those two guys, my, my guys who who work very close with both of those guys, said they are just great guys, good good team guys, good 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 teammates, good good players, and they're both very good at what they do. Both very good at what they do. Well, look, hey. I think it's going to be a tremendous game. Let's we got it. We we can't get off the phone without picking, picking having our picks, and we've got to get a score. So, what? Who do you like? Who, who do you like? I like the Eagles and the A. Hey, Las Vegas likes the Eagles too. One point five favorites, I think. Maybe it's changed, but uh, but I'm I'm picking the Eagles, and I'm picking them winning by four. I think it's going to be thirty-one twenty-seven. Okay, you know, I, I, I guess it's going to be more points scored than people will it think. You really think? You, you, you really think so? Think be, why do you I think do. that? I, do you I think? really do. I think that I, I, you know, I do think that the the Eagles' defense will will survive. I think that you're going to see Patrick Mahomes make some unbelievable off script plays in in the ball game. That's just something I think that. That, that's going to happen, and I hope it's not a snooze fest. I hope it's one that you know that that goes all the way down to the wire. How about I think, you? I think the Eagles win it late. I, I, I'm going to go 30 27. Ooh. Eagles, Eagles 30, Eagles 30, Chiefs 27. Yes, Eagles right. go- and, and then we can't not talk about the halftime show, right? Oh. Yeah, come you on, got, my girl. Read, you read, baby. Talk about the halftime show. What do you think? Uh, hey, listen. Okay, so you know it was it was funny. We met, we were I was with some friends the other night, and I mentioned the halftime show, and one of the guys like, I don't even know who that. I don't even know who Rihanna is. Who is that? I'm like, oh my god, where's the guy been living? I said, well, I said, wait a minute. I said, I know she's been retired, and she's kind of taking a little bit of time off. I said, do you know who Rihanna is? I said, are you aware of what she's done? I mean. Yeah. You know, sold you know 500 whatever, 300 million, 400 million albums, whatever it was, and then she just kind of took a break and she started this cosmetics company that's worth a billion dollars. It's a yeah. billion dollar company. I mean, she's absolutely, yeah, absolutely. that the you know, and what she's done philanthropically around the world yeah. is, is I, unbelievable. They've yeah. had to be under a rock if they don't know who Rihanna is. I mean, just I mean, just it's just. Um, it's 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 really 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 gonna be a really good. Show. I mean the whole thing, her and the, the mom, the, the mom, the, the game. You know the the you know it's it's just it's set up to be. It was a really really great year for the NFL, and I know they've got to be pleased with it. Although you know the, the officiating thing, the officiating thing keeps coming up, and that people still talking about that. And I think the league has and to deal with that as as we move into the to the to the you know, to the 2020 22 23 off season. But I'm looking. I'm looking for it to be a, a really, really good game. I've already put together my menu: barbecue ribs and and, um, and chicken wings in our house. Oh, you're gonna, hey, you're gonna have some yard fan, huh? Hey, I'm, I'm listen, and I'm not doing. I, you know, we got a smoker. I said, my girl said, you gonna do something? No, I'm not doing. It. We're, we're we're going to. You know, we're going, we're going to let four ribs do it for us. I'm gonna let them do it. We'll let them do it. That's the, hey, that's the way to do it, Reg. And yeah. hey, hey, hunker down. It's gonna be a full day of of you know lead up they're gonna talk about every subject known to known to man and try to connect they connect as many dots as they can one thing i've got glad i'm glad i'm not down on radio row in glendale with you having to be pulled around through uh you know 28 25 different interviews per day that's just not no you know and that's just not fun part of being in, in no. Glendale. No. Way to do it if you're not coaching in it. If you want to watch the game, just get in there right before the game. Yeah. Just just show up the day before. All the lead up, gosh man, I don't I don't envy the guys that are going through that stuff. No, right no, and you know what and I'm thinking by you know by you know by Thursday when the players 
you know, we, we talked about it when I was at the league office, you know, is it too much? And everybody says, no, it's got to, you know, we got to we got to make sure all the media get everything. You know, I'm thinking about you know, about Wednesday, but but they do it. They, they there's a they stop the, the players stop the last interviews at the team hotels on Thursday, and then the last thing on Friday is the, the, the commissioners say the NFL address, and and then then the players have a have a certain players have have to talk to the networks on Saturday. But that that's kind of it. But it it is what it is. It's why it's the biggest game in America. It's why it's you know 110, 120 people are watching. 20 million people watch it worldwide. It's it's the biggest. Biggest spectacle of professional sports in, in our in our country. So we're, you know it'll be it'll yeah, be a great game. Lots of awards show on Saturday night. Yeah. That I, that's always good. That, that's yeah. always yeah. good. And, you know it's very young and it's an in infancy really. And it, I don't know. It's been five six years maybe that it's been going. Maybe a little bit longer yeah. than that. But it's great to you know, it's great. I think that event. And then the Hall of Fame event in Canton, Ohio, are two of the coolest things that happen on the NFL schedule. And they can, you know, they can, they, they're complete opposites. You know, it's that there award you. show is right. about as glitzy as you can get. And then, you, yeah. and then you're in Canton, Ohio every year for the Hall of Fame in an old stadium that's packed right. and there's just seats on the floor of the stadium and, and of guys high get up, yeah, basically a, a big high school stadium where yep. guys, you know, guys that are being honored. And I think the cool thing too, Reg, that we got to talk about a little bit down the road is, is how they've expanded yeah. the Hall of Fame in terms for contributors. There's going to be actually a PR guy going in this yeah. year. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, my good friend Kevin yeah. Byrne as yeah. a contributor. He's going yeah. to be in the Hall of Fame. He should be there. Good as he is, he should a be there. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's just the tentacles of the National Football League spreading out. It's just not necessarily the 22 guys that are out there on the field. More and more contributors are coming from the assistant coaches' ranks. Yep. Now they're doing contributors from the people in PR, sports information, all of those things. I think it's a great thing. It's I nothing. Tip my, hey, I tip my hat to the NFL office getting that done. Yeah. And and I'm hey, I'm excited about this weekend. I'm going to be holed up watching. Hey, watching ball. Probably won't watch much of the uh, much of the pregame stuff. I can't do ten hours of pregame for a two and a half hour <laughs> game, but. Uh, if the weather's right, I'll probably try to at least get nine in. Okay. All right. Well, listen, we'll, 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 we'll check out, we'll reconvene. We'll, we'll check in on Sunday and we'll, uh, we'll be back next week to chop up, chop up the Super Bowl, see what, see what's out. Hopefully Indianapolis and Arizona will have coaches by then. And then we'll, we'll talk about that too. Well, I, it, it wouldn't surprise me that they wouldn't. As you know, there's usually a moratorium. There won't yeah. be an announcement. Maybe somebody will leak something. Yeah. If they've you know if they've made a decision, but if they haven't made it, if they haven't made a decision, then they're not going to be able to trump the the Super Bowl. They're going to have to wait till post Super Bowl. Probably got to do it afterwards. Okay. Yeah. All right. All, All right, right, man. Have a good one. Take care, you coach. Take care. All right. Yeah. Okay.